Hi everyone, I'm Emma Young, also known as the Cheese Explorer over on the old social medias. I am very, very excited today. I am going to be talking to Blackwood Cheese Company from Kent as part of the British Cheese Weekender, which has so far been brilliant fun. Looking forward to the rest of today's lineup too. We'll be talking about Graceburn. Ta -ta. This is the marinated feta style cheese, as well as Edmund Chu, the other cheese which Blackwoods make. This one I'm particularly excited about talking about because it's, it's quite unique. If you don't know Graceburn or Blackwoods Cheese Company, you might not have seen this before. You might not know what, what is this in a jar. Dave will tell us a little bit more about it when I get to have a chat with him in a bit. Dave is the head cheese maker and director of Blackwoods. This is a cheese which is sort of hard to categorise, sort of sits on its own. It can go into your counter where you can let it do its thing. You don't have to give it any cheese care, which is brilliant, but also it can sit with your fresh cheeses too. So in the sort of feta, mozzarella style categories as well. So it fits in quite a number of different places and it's very strikingly bright yellow. So it's really appealing and looks lovely on the counters. So yeah, let's uh, head over to see my little catch up with Dave, who is the cheesemaker at Blackwoods. All right, so I've managed to steal Dave away from his daily cheese making and busy schedule to have a little chat. Um, thanks very much for, no for chatting with me. Dave, do you want to tell us a bit about Graceburn to start with? It's pretty unique. Could you talk us through sort of the recipe, what it is and about it yeah so yeah Graceburn is the cheese that we um started started blackwoods company behind it's based on a persian feta so this style of cheese is is quite popular in australia which is where, where i'm from i used to work for a company just outside of melbourne in the yarra valley called the yarra valley dairy they make a, a persian feta which is which is really popular i did a, a traineeship in in cheese making there uh, in 2006 which seems like an eternity ago <laughs> now i worked there for three and a half years and then set off to come to to the uk and and europe to travel around and, and learn more about cheese and then go back to australia and start a, a business or something over there but you stayed got, got sidelined a bit so yeah, yeah in 2010 i came over here worked for neil's yard dairy for a good well yeah started off at 10 days uh and I left there sort of five years later. But sort of halfway through that, me and a couple of mates, both from the Arrow Valley where I grew up, we were all in London and we started making some Graceman on the side to tour our other jobs. Cammy was down at Slate Farm making cheese with Mary Holbrook. Yeah. I was at Neil's Yards and, and Rory was a primary school teacher at the time. Uh, but between the three of us, we, we set the business up and yeah, made our first batch in September 2013. Beautiful. It's crazy. So what is a Persian feta? So it's it's the idea of, of preserving cheese in oil as opposed to being in brine. Okay. Uh, I guess it comes from uh, areas where there's not a lot of refrigeration. I think it's quite an old sort of ancient method of, of preserving cheese. A lot of people might have seen like the Labne balls yeah. get preserved in, in oil as well. So it's, it's yeah, it, it's a way of, of preserving cheese in, in oil. Um, and is the uh, texture different to feta feta? Yeah, yeah. so... The recipe that I learned in Australia, which we've kind of adapted quite a lot, but yeah, it was a it's a cow's milk uh, feta style. We say feta because it's the easiest for people to identify right. with, but um, yeah, the reality is it's it's the recipe is totally different. And feta is made from sheep and goat's milk, yeah. and this is cow's milk, and it's a, a more of a lactic set than a than a rennet set. Um, it's a lot sort of richer and creamier, mm -hmm. uh, a lot less acidic. Uh, there's a lot less salt. Uh, it's just kind of like uh, really accessible, really creamy, really enjoyable. Yeah. And so what is it in for people who haven't tried Grace Burn? So it's in an oil? Yeah, so we use British rapeseed oil. We also flavour the cheese a little bit. We put some thyme and some garlic and some pepper in there as well. Yeah. Um, the cheese itself, it takes us about two weeks to make the cheese. Um, it spends about three days in the make room going from... from liquid milk to to a solid form yeah uh and then it goes into brine kind of like how you'd buy feta as well where you get your you know the traditional wooden barrel feta 
uh, we put it into into a brine for about 10 days it just sort of helps with the texture and helps with the acidity and and helps or helps balance out the acidity uh, and gets the salt into the cheese and then yeah after that sort of 10 day period it goes into the into the jar and and yeah we flavor it and put the oil in so brilliant i mean it's delicious if you haven't tried it try it um what do you like to do with it so how do you eat it yeah i mean to be honest most of my eating is is very much just like this at at work <laughs> at cracking it open <laughs> and, and having a little taste uh out of the jar but when i do remember to take some home which my wife is always cursing me that I don't. <laughs> um, I mean, this time of year, in, in spring, we're into a salad mm. on some um, grilled asparagus, just crumbled over the top. It's delicious, but yeah, I mean, it's super versatile. You can use it just like you would traditional feta, yeah. just sort of substitute it straight in. But because of that less acidity and that sort of more creamy butteriness, it, it can go in in any recipe that calls for cheese you can put grace burn in it i find it goes with basically everything yep <laughs> saturday morning brunch uh you know on any type of eggs from fried eggs to scrambled eggs yeah with smoked salmon uh yeah super super, super versatile. versatile wicked and you do a couple of other flavors too right yep so we started on this one the original which is the thyme garlic and pepper <laughs> we also now do a chipotle and lemon and a truffle version as well great and the same you'd use them the same truffle on pasta yeah like yeah. a nice mushroomy pasta with that on top is oof, it's yeah. delicious the chipotle we've been we've been making tacos at home a bit some slow cooked like brisket with some of that sprinkled on top Perfect. it's pretty pretty delicious but yeah again they can just be used on on anything like just from the jar. yeah that's is, is acceptable <laughs> um do you use the oil afterwards once you've eaten the cheese yeah, yeah yeah it's it's really good uh it's kind of like a ready-made salad dressing i guess you can yeah. just add a little bit of acid like vinegar or lemon juice or something like that uh you'll have the little bit of broken up cheese in the bottom uh yeah give it a shake and, and yeah chuck it on the salad it's delicious or chuck it into a pasta sauce yeah um but yeah it's, it's, it's good stuff. zero Don't waste, waste it. exactly really cool yeah wicked so we've got your got a helicopter joining us uh, that's the other camera filming. <laughs> so we've got oh, your other <laughs> cheese here as well. The uh, yeah, tell us who is this? Yeah, so this is um, this is Edmund Chew. Yeah, it was kind of inspired by the French cheese uh, Long from mm -hmm. the Champagne region. Um, I quite liked the challenge of this cheese. I might regret that a little bit now, but <laughs> when we first started making it, uh, the idea of making like a lactic cheese that's also a wash rind that has this really you know cute kind of dome in it but that also presents like quite a big challenge in the maturation side of things yeah um normally with with your cheese as it's maturing you turn it over to make sure that you know the breakdown is even and that the rind doesn't slip off uh and, and that the moisture stays the same within the cheese so we've decided not to do that and just to, <laughs> to keep it upright uh and yeah really work on the recipe for you know the four four odd years that we've been making this on and off so it's a it's a raw milk lactic cow's cheese made in in one day more or less it's matured for about three weeks we matured it between sort of nine and twelve degrees depending on how much stock we've got in there really high humidity like up about 90 95 percent humidity in the room for the first 10 days the cheeses are just kind of turned 90 degrees and put down so they don't stick to the the racks mm -hmm. or mats once the rinds uh, just a geotrichum candidum on the outside here. Once that's uh, fully established, then we begin uh, a washing routine as well. And we'll wash the cheese two to three times a week in a, in a salt water solution. In salt water, okay. Yeah. So you don't add any alcohol? No, we do do a, a special edition over Christmas. Uh, shout out to Le Grappen, uh, <laughs> who sorted us out with some eau de vie from Burgundy. Yeah. So traditionally, the, the long uh, that this is based on is washed in a... Mark de Burgoyne. Uh, so yeah, over Christmas we do do a, a small run, that special edition, oh, cool. alcohol washed, but at the moment it's just salt. And colour-wise, so this, if you're familiar with long, it's 
very orange, right? So yours yeah. is not. No, so orange, the orange and long is the same. Sort of orange is what makes uh, like Spark and Her Red Leicester or Cheshire or something, which is a, a food additive called Anato. Uh, we did play with it a little bit in the beginning, but we were kind of like, if the cheese doesn't need it and it's not like we're traditional cheesemakers carrying on a tradition such as, you know, Cheshire or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really see much value in, in, in adding it to it. We'd rather just let the, the natural progression of the cheese um, of the rind sort of just is... Let it do its the thing. The colours, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When it's quite young, the cheese is quite pale and as it moves through its maturation, we get that sort of natural, which you can kind of see, it's starting to come through on the on the top here now. Yeah. It's a bit more sort of peachy and, and it's got that nice little blush to it. And as the cheese matures, you can sort of see how ripe the cheese is from, from the colour of the rinds. I mean, I think you sort of touched on something really important there is that it looks natural, right? So long is really distinctive because it's orange, but I really, really enjoy sort of the color changes you get within this without the addition of anato. I think it's got a really lovely sort of blush to it yep. from the ivory into peach. It, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Nice and wrinkly too. What does it look like inside? Let's have a look, <laughs> shall we? Yes. So this batch, uh, this is made on the 23rd of, of March, which is coming up to kind of, uh, selling point now, about three weeks, 21 days I don't know if old. you can see that really well, but it's got an absolutely beautiful breakdown. And there we go. So yeah, Dave will talk us through it. But if you have a look, there's definitely two distinct textures in there. We're looking at about uh, 20, I don't even know what the date is today, <laughs> but uh, we're just, just, at a, just over 21 days. So I think this is about 25 days old. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then why, why does it do that? What's this? What's the breakdown? Uh, like, what's the yeah, so we've got a lactic cheese. So we make the cheese in the lactic style. So that means that um, it's a it's a rather quick acidification. It sort of happens in 24 hours and the pH comes right down, uh, down to about sort of 4.6, 4.5 sort of area. So at that stage, yeah, you've got this really nice, fresh, uh, quite solid, acidic uh, cheese. Yeah. As the rind uh, grows, uh yeah the rind starts to break down the cheese on the inside so we get uh yeah this lovely breakdown like a mixture of uh proteolysis and, and lipolysis sort of breaking down the fats and the proteins uh into this sort of yeah really nice sort of gooey gooey texture, gooey texture. i mean i think what's really clever about this um is the fact that you do have those two distinct textures without the rind slipping off yeah, um, which you, which is an oh, absolute nod to I'm, good maturing. I'm not gonna lie, we've <laughs> definitely had uh, a lot of cheeses with, with the rind slipping off. Yeah. But yeah, just that sort of perseverance and sticking with it and making these small changes along the way. Yeah, mm. we've kind of got got something that we're pretty happy with now. Yeah. Beautiful. Should we taste it? Yeah. Oof, that's quite a bit. <laughs> Must say that. Um, when we talk about sort of serving suggestions, I have been known to eat this like an apple. <laughs> Pick up and bite. Um, but yeah, let's, let's be a bit more dainty this time around. Mm. See that nice kind of fresher, you know, acidic core. Yep. And then that breakdown with that nice sort of peanutty kind of thing going on. It's a really nice sort of refreshing, cool sort of flavor that's going on in the middle as well right mm -hmm. and i really like that juxtaposition like you said with the the rind which has a bit more of those sort of meaty boozy peanutty type yeah. notes as well um well that's delicious mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> what um so yeah cheese board cheese um yeah, yeah. straight up eat like apple board, eat it like an apple yeah. uh yeah just just on the cheese board is, is lovely you can use it quite a bit in cooking as well yeah. Uh, with some of our smaller cheeses that might not have made it out on wholesale, we've been making like a steak sauce at home Amazing. with them, which has been pretty delicious. But traditionally, this uh, this cheese you would pour uh, sparkling wine mm -hmm. over the top. Uh, we're in we're in Kent in the southeast. There is loads of delicious sparkling wines around here. Yep. 
maybe not over the top, but definitely a nice glass on the sides. I agree. Uh, yeah. And, yeah <laughs> something nice and crisp on the sides of that. Okay. It's delicious. Would you um, would you just have it with wine? Is there anything else you'd pair it with? Drink-wise? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love red wine and I love cheese, but I don't necessarily think they go together all that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, but generally, like, drink what you like, eat yeah. what you like. I don't think the pairings are too essential, but, I mean, I, yeah, a nice ale works really, really well with this. Um, cider as cider, well, the acidity, yeah. like, yeah. When they get a bit riper, uh, the cider really works, really works quite well, just sort yes. of helps cleanse that palate off a bit. And then a bit of a curveball here what i mean I've, I've had people ask before what to drink with grace burn and i don't know what to say <laughs> uh i'm just gonna stick on the on the fizzy yeah. fizzy train you know uh a little little biscuit with a bit of grace burn on it uh as an aperitif sort of snack with a glass of bubbles is pretty, Perfect. pretty nice so i go and get a bottle that sounds good hello again hope that was interesting and uh, enjoyable hope we managed to teach you a few things about Graceburn and Edmund Chew. Um, we will be continuing over on our Instagram with a, a little Q&A, seeing as um, we are not live right now. So we're going to have a, a question box up. Um, if you pop your questions into that story, then we'll have a, a little look through. We'll answer and we'll publish those answers so everyone can see um, if you've got the same questions. But yeah, thank you very much for your uh, support. Uh, thanks to British Cheese Weekender for this Brill Cheesy Fest, uh, especially Tracy Colley and Patrick McGuigan. Um, yeah, all brilliant photography, by the way. Stunning, right? So that's uh, Stephanie Calber photography. So at the bottom here, you'll see the website and Instagram handle for Blackwood's Cheese if you want to buy any of the cheeses. Um, it's also available in Borough Market and through a select number of retailers and distributors throughout the UK. So have a, have a little mosey on at the website um, to see where you can get your little Grace Burn and Edmund Chew fix. Cheers guys, have a good rest of your Sunday and I will see you soon. Bye.